which takes us to Cabana Republic, and Kiro is going to be our Cyan Empire on the left side of the map. Our yellow allies on the right side. We do have Vindies! All right, we've got three games down. Vindy's with a slight point lead. Kiro, he's up against the ropes. If Vindy's wins this game, Vindy's wins this series. But Kiro has his chance to stop him. He effectively has to go 2-0 to win this series. Vindy's, he can do something a little bit cheesy if he wants. He can go for some sort of naval yard pressure. We do have, we have seen that on this map. Also, what is, I wouldn't say common, but... Kind of one of the more common cheeses is going airfield, like deployed over here. You get a Vindicator. You get potentially Tier 2, depending on if you want to. You get a Cryocopter out. Then you immediately move your MCV, deploy it on the left side of the map, throw down a proxy airfield, and you're sitting pretty if you're able to do the damage. If not, you're kind of dead. I've seen players use it effectively, and I've also seen players die from trying to use that. Mega Bay will likely be out as soon as Kiro can afford it. He's selling off the barracks. Which means he's like, hey, you know what, Tank Buster attacks hasn't been all that good, although it did definitely benefit him in... All right, all right, what are you doing, Vindis? He's taking out all of these buildings, which means he could be planning his third base at that location, as opposed to his third refinery up on that ridge. Oh, walling everything in! This is a big tell from Vindis. He actually ended up dropping down a Javelin Trooper in... Can you do that?! Is that allowed? I was about to say, he dropped a Javelin Trooper inside of those walls, right where the power plant would go, which means you can't throw a power plant down there. Her, her. Didn't actually work the, work. the burst drone is going to be spotting that MCV. The MCV could just be going for a fast third refinery. The Mecha Bay is out. There's the power plant to power all of these wonderful buildings. The walls are not going to be completed, which means that uh, Riptides could be doing some damage, but really... He doesn't have to worry too much about that because I don't think that Vindy's is going to be going for any sort of a naval yard pressure. Although, if he's going for the third base, he probably could have deployed his MCV a bit earlier. That burst drone is still tagged on that MCV. So he's going to be having constant vision. Some nice splitting of these bombs here. But are the Peacekeepers going to be able to protect the Javelin Troopers? They do protect one of them. However, the rest of these Peacekeepers are going to be able to eliminate... Oh no, actually, two of those Peacekeepers actually did fall. So two, pe two Peacekeepers down, a couple of Imperial Warriors are down. Apollo's out on the field as the third refinery looks like it is going to be established. And it looks like the dog did get cleaned up there. However, spots the naval yard. The third refinery is out. Cabana Republic going to be Vindy or going to be Kiro's choice of map. We're up to three Tangus, which isn't quite a scary number. But with these walls, with these walls, Tangus aren't going to be super effective because you can only land like two of them here two of them there, and that takes a long time to kill a to kill anything with Tangus. Not so much ore collectors, ore collectors die pretty quickly to Tangus. However, we do have that third refinery going to be established by Vindy's. He could be going for some naval yard pressure or just going for a little bit closer of a second airfield. It is going to be the naval yard. Does he have that tier two? He could be adding on the tier two after what I'm assuming is going to be a power plant, and the tier two is not actually going to be completed. It is Yari mini subs. Is there one actually already? Yeah, there's one halfway across the map. It is going to be spotting this third refinery location and going in for the pressure. The Hydrofoil is out. Is it going to be a suicide Yari mini sub? No, the Hydrofoil is sending out immediately across the map. The Vindicators and the Apollos are already here. Two of these uh, Tangus could be going down here as one Apollo does get pulled at just the right time. One Tangu does go down. The second Apollo gets eliminated. Actually, both of the Apollos do get eliminated there. The Yari is going to be harassing this expansion, and the Assault Destroyer is out. That Tier 2 is here. However, it does look like that Black Hull Armor is going to be doing, absorbing some of the shots here, but is it actually enough to stop these Yari mini-subs from their suicide uh, kamikaze attacks? No, it is not, as they do almost eliminate that Ore Refinery. One more hit from a Yari mini-sub would eliminate that Ore Refinery. It could be absolutely crucial that that Ore Refinery does still stand. The main base is still solid. Is that, yeah, the Javelin Trooper is still inside of that power plant. I don't actually know what the status of that in terms of being a allowed glitch. Because, I mean, that's definitely, that should be a physics collision. Which, I mean, we all know that the Sage Engine doesn't handle collisions very well. But, I mean, still. Oh, eliminating that Tangu didn't actually do as much damage as I would have thought. It did do a little bit of splash damage to that ore refinery. 
which isn't great, but it didn't eliminate it, so Vindy's is still going to be getting some money, but we are going to be seeing a pretty critical mass of Tangus as one Apollo does go down, I'm sure the second one gets eliminated as well, and this stray Vindicator does get annihilated for the price of one single Tangu. That is not a good situation to be in when you're trading two Apollos and a Vindicator. That's 3,200 credits worth of units for 800 credits of Tangus in the south. On the water, we do have the couple of Yari mini subs. Actually, three of them in total going to be potentially dealing with that Assault Destroyer. However, they might just be going for that Ore Refinery, which is currently completely undefended. The Tangus and the Yari mini subs are going to be putting on pressure at the same time, potentially on the same location. The Tangus, are they going to be coming in to reinforce? There's no units here. There's no units of building. Is there going to be anything? No, there is not anything in terms of defensive structures. There's no Static D to protect that third refinery. This Assault Destroyer is so low on health. I'm not sure what it actually took damage from. Could have been Yari Mini Subs going to be doing the, de the doing their best to take it out. However, the Assault Destroyers are going to be going in for the harass. This is not good for Vindy's. He lost so much in air power. He didn't have anything to really contend these units. However, it looks like that refinery getting cleaned up. Nothing else will be happening on the right side of the map because that Assault Destroyer is going to be locking down the location. However, this other second Assault Destroyer may be getting simply overwhelmed. We do have a Chopper VX, the perfect unit to hard counter this Assault Destroyer, it will potentially, yeah, will grab the kill on that Aura Collector, which is kind of annoying, but the second Aura Collector can go ahead and be put back to work. Apollos are going to be streaming across the map. However, them two of them is not going to be enough to deal with this many Tangus. The Tangus can easily box and sort of just push away those Apollos. There goes the second Assault Destroyer. This match may be going to Kiro. He's handling this in fine fashion. He's like, hey, you know what? Your main base is all walled off. That's funny, because it happens that your refinery on the water is not walled off, and it's kind of vulnerable. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that location. Three Yari Mini Subs are going to be moving out. They can easily deal with this single Hydrofoil. Of course, the Weapon Jammer can deal with one of the Yari Mini Subs, but it can't stop all three of them. As you can see, one of them is going to be dealing with that Hydrofoil, potentially a little bit of an A-move mistake there. Vindy's is going to be going for the kill on that Oil Derrick, which is nice, going to be claiming potentially... I'm not actually sure what just went down there. I'm not sure if it was like a striker in the air or what. It looks like the Hydrofoil did get eliminated. That Ore Collector does get eliminated. And Vindy's just cannot keep up with the economy of his opponent. We do have... Wait, did... I think both of those Yari mini subs actually use their special ability. They sacrifice themselves to take out that Ore Refinery very quickly before the Assault Destroyer could actually do enough damage to eliminate them. But one Assault Destroyer is out on the map. Two Vindicators, two Apollos. But we've got a wicked mass of Tangus, which actually, if they try to engage directly on top of this Assault Destroyer, would be a bad situation. It looks like Kiro has actually been doing not too good of a job of keeping his Ore Collectors alive. A couple of Apollos going to be getting taken out here. Another one does get eliminated just barely. Vindy's not controlling as well as he could. He is going to be losing this Assault Destroyer. That is not... Oh, that is not a good use of a Assault Destroyer. A couple of Vindicators are going to be coming in for the bombing run. Are they going to be able to claim any targets? They are going to be splitting their bombs off onto that Ore Collector. Not enough to actually take it down. They will escape without too much damage taken, though. Another Assault Destroyer going to be moving out on the map. And Kiro has to be absolutely careful. Because with just straight Tangus, he can't engage. Vindy's has to be careful because he cannot directly engage with units. And his Apollos aren't in good enough numbers to directly engage with those Tangus. He can't directly engage with his Assault Destroyers either because of the threat posed by the Striker VXs. So Vindy's has to control perfectly. He also has to keep this third refinery alive because he spent like eight grand just rebuilding this ore refinery. He's constantly using it. Kiro doing such a good job of harassing this location, but we may actually have a situation where Vindy's has enough units to stave off these Yari mini subs. Although they are going to be running away, he can get free repairs on the Yaris by running them back to the Imperial docks. And oh, these Tangus are going to be the preface for the Striker VXs. Can they clear the sky? A couple of Vindicators actually don't need to get eliminated at all. There goes the Refinery, another Yari mini sub slamming into that Refinery, eliminating it. But is it going to be enough? We have no Hydrofoils out on the map. Again, the Apollos have to be here to get the perfect angle on the, either the Tango or the Striker VX. The Chopper is in the sky. A couple of... Oh, and this could be a situation. Vindy's. He eliminated those buildings early on, and this could be a situation where eliminating those was actually a really bad idea. These Apollos once again getting caught out in the open. They've got their pants down, and also they've got their shields down as... 
One of them gets eliminated, and that Javelin Trooper on top of that power plant is finally coming into play as five Tsunami Tanks stream across the map. Kiro, going to be macroing quite well, could even take himself a fourth expansion. He's got Vindy's Contained. And he's got the freedom to do what he wants with the units he wants inside of that walls. That Javelin Trooper is indeed safe. However, the Apollos are going to be doing a massive amount of damage. No, it does look like Kiro does figure out how to attack. And he is going to be dropping down some of these units. He is going to be losing some of those Chopper VXs. Apollos are going to be focus firing quite well. Another tank who does go down. However, they are going to be crashing down on top of these buildings. Some of them, which is more money that Kiro, ha that Vindy's has to spend in repairs. The Tsunami Tanks, five of them, are currently going to be assaulting that MCV. Vindy's is in a difficult situation, but he's getting the crush. Two of those Tsunami Tanks going down, and the forces on the left side of the map from Vindy's are going to be directly assaulting this base. This could be a GG for one of these players, but I'm not sure which one of these players is actually going to be because these players both have the potential to end each other. But which one of these players will be claiming the win in this game? The Javelin Troopers doing fantastic amounts of damage, but he is going to be getting crushed. Those uh, Tsunami Tanks with so much crushing potential. They are going to be eliminating all of those Javelin Troopers. Such a rough situation to be in as the MCV is going to be taking direct damage, but he does get the crush. The Soul Destroyers in the main base are going to be getting cleaned up. That, croc that uh, Chopper VX is exactly what Hero needed. And now... This fully elite and fully heroic Tsunami Tank combo is going to be el eliminating potentially both of these barracks. One does go down, and that is now an elite Vindicator. However, we do have an elite Tsunami Tank, which is not going to be crushing these two Javelin Troopers. He doesn't get the opportunity. Vindy's may have held the line this game so insane as two more Javelin Troopers, those two Javelin Troopers just eliminated two Tangus. The armies have almost been reset, but we do have fully heroic units strewn across the map. So many of these units from both players are just being sacrificially given away. Which is not how you want to be handling your units. You do not want them to think back on their lives and be like, Yes, I was a martyr for my cause. You want them to be like, Hey, I eliminated a ton of my enemy. I killed them. But, three base empire versus two refinery allies... Vindy's is not going to be able to be matching the economics of his opponent. Additionally, Yari mini subs are going to be moving out. The assault, the assault destroyers, the real beef of Vindy's armies has been eliminated, and this is where it gets so dangerous because up to this point, Vindy's has had some muscle. He's had some armor to deal direct damage. He's had that oil there, but now, infantry that can be focused quickly by Tengus, stomped on by Striker VXs, and ran over by Tsunami Tanks. All three of those things can deal with infantry so, so easily. The Vindicator's not able to get the shots off on those Yari mini-subs that they needed. The Yaris can suicide themselves. Three of them might be able to take out the Seaport considering that it's taken some damage already. Or even if one of them just fires torpedoes while the other two sacrifice themselves. We'll have to see what is he planning to do. He's firing more torpedoes as out comes the Assault Destroyer. The Vindicators as well. However, one of them does get a kill on... No, he is not going to be... He does get the kill on that Assault Destroyer. The Repairs... We're not able to save it. A Peacekeeper moving out across the map. Five Javelin Troopers in the middle. A quick a quick recap of what forces these players have. The airfield does get dropped down. This should be a second airfield. As, sec as the first airfield does still stand. Huh. Vindy's should go ahead and sell off this, second, this first airfield. He doesn't actually need two at this point. He can't afford to produce off of two and produce off of the naval yard. A nice transform there. Going to be catching that Peacekeeper. And I think that Kiro... He needs to take a fourth refinery. He needs to gain such an economic advantage that he can just spam out absolutely everything. Potentially, oh, Cryo get in. Vindy's forcing the sell-off of both the Mecha Bay. Keep in mind, that was a tier two Mecha Bay and also that refinery. It means that Vindy's won't get the kill on those buildings, which is a good situation for, uh, for Kiro to be in. But it also means that Kiro just lost a third of his economy. He is going to be going for a fourth refinery. At this point, I don't agree with the fourth refinery. He needs that Mecha Bay. He can hold the line, certainly, with the forces that he has. But if Vindy's micro is perfectly, we could be seeing a battle which Kiro should be able to hold turn into the favor of Vindy's. See, Vindy's is going to be losing a couple of Javelin Troopers, which is not too fun. You don't want to be losing Javelin Troopers inside of buildings. But these buildings are going to be holding pretty strategic locations. They're essentially a nice buffer zone. Vindy's, 
His MCV is in the danger zone. Are we going to be seeing the Chopper VX swing in from the north and do huge amounts of damage to that MCV? Maybe, maybe not, as the Javelin's troopers are going to be doing some preemptive damage. And Kiro... Oh, if he loses this game, he is out of the tournament. He loses the finals. However, the Apollo is getting some nice shots off, but they're not in good enough numbers. The Javelin Troopers is going to be providing excellent support from the ground. Two, 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 two Tangus will go down. Oh, no, the Spy actually grabs three of those ja of those Tangus and is going to be helping the Tangus to eliminate other Tangus. Kiro is going to be getting forced out of this game almost certainly. How can he actually stay? He's got choppers on the back end of things. Going to be hitting the main base, but we could be sitting seeing a sort of base race situation as Kiro does have all sorts of units of Bindi's inside of his main. He is going to be losing the Jojo Core, two of them to be exact. While his harvesters are going to be getting harassed, those three Tangus turning the tide of these battles. I didn't even spot that spy in this game. Sick City from Vindy's is going to be saving him. Those moves were absolutely sick from Vindy's. The MCV is actually going to be crushing all of these uni all of these units potentially. What is this game? Chopper VXs were able to save. Were they able to save the Mecha Bay? We'll have to see as that... Oh, the multi-gunner turret is going to be getting focused down just quickly enough to save that Mecha Bay. That probably would have been game ending. With the economic damage that has gone down... Oh, this Javelin Trooper is a gutsy fellow as he is going to be taking on some of these Chopper VXs. They do transform just in time. That Javelin Trooper may be getting eliminated by the Tangus. And the point defense drones are going to be lending themselves to these units quite nicely. Man, this game is absolutely insane. I've been saying that a lot. This game is pretty nice. It's pretty solid. It's not the craziest game ever. It's not the craziest Red Alert 3 match ever to be known. But it's a solid game. It's a solid AVE on Cabana Republic. Where's the MCV? That's what I want to know. Where is... Oh no. Did I miss the MCV going down? Apollos and Vindicators going to be cleaning up that last Mecha Bay. But Emperor's Rage is going to be allowing Kiro to do ridiculous amounts of damage. Eliminates almost everything in that engagement. Do we actually have... Yeah, we still have both of those airfields. I'm searching the map. I don't actually see... Vindy's, what happened to his MCV? I don't actually know. I'm going to have to go back through and find out what happened to that MCV. Sorry about that, folks. Kiro, what can he do to win? Well, he needs a Mecha Bay. The other opportunity that he has to win is to go dual racks. And actually, oh, if he actually has tier two on this docks, he actually already has Tsunami Tank pressure. If he goes barracks instead of Mecha Bay, he could spam out some infantry bindies. With no MCV, he's confined to the land. This would be an excellent opportunity for an Imperial Warrior Tank Buster Army combo. The only weakness, of course, to the aircraft of Vindy's. However, Vindy's does lose pretty much his entire infantry army to those Tangus. And as long as the Mecha Bay does still produce some Tangus, he's going to be pretty good. Oh, one Apollo does go down. A second one does take significant damage, although not terrifying catastrophic damage. Hmm. That Vindicator sacrificing himself. And I guess Vindy's, I'm assuming, is going to be dropping that game because there is a fifth game coming up. Kiro able to even things up. Vindy's pushing him to the brink, absolutely. But Vindy's is going to be having a final opportunity as Kiro does. It's a best of one. This all comes down to this one final game. This series has been a ton of fun. Game number five is going to be the deciding match. The ace match is kicking off just now. And game five is taking us to Snowplow. Spawning as the yellow allies in the north side we do have from Team Mates. He just tied things up, or rather he just lost a game which tied things up. It is Mates Vindies. And down in the south, the man who just tied up this series, taking it to the ace match, a best of five in game five. It is Kiro. All right, Snowplow is going to be Vindy's map of choice. He, of course, he lost the previous game, which means he got to choose this map. And this map has some wonderful, wonderful allied cheeses, which are very potent on it. However, this wall segment would suggest it is not going to be a cheese. It is looking like it is going to be a pretty standard opener for Vindy's. The dog is going to be heading out around the map. The Dojo Core is also doing the exact same thing. 
infantry, but not dual racks, which again does indicate a bit of a longer game is in store for both of these players. Neither one of them is going super heavy on those infantry. Actually, Vindy's is kind of going pretty heavy. He's going to be getting the laser log on this instant dojo, and he is going to be camping it also with a dog, which will allow him to kill anything that comes out of there immediately. However, oh, a couple of Imperial Warriors could be cutting off this flow of Javelin Troopers. Do we have the Naval Yard already down? Yes, we do. It is out. Is it going to be ripped one Riptide or two? Oh! One Javelin Trooper does go down right there. That Peacekeeper was not able to save him. A little bit of a bad rally point there. On the right side, we do have the dog going to be stunning. That Imperial Warrior, can the laser lock actually take down the Imperial Warrior before he comes out of the mode? It looks like Kiro isn't actually paying quite enough attention to it. And the gatehouse is going to be getting eliminated. So there goes the bridge, as it does get destroyed right there. The Riptide is out. Both of them have possibly been spotted. They definitely have now, as the second Riptide pulls up way close to that building, which was occupied by Kira. Once again, Kira with these super annoying burst drones. The airfield is out on the water. We could see a fast third refinery or it could be a turret push with the Riptides in force and also the any Vindicators from this airfield going to be providing support as well. The MCV is going to be deploying for a third refinery location and Kiro, his follow-up, he needs a Mecha Bay if he doesn't already have one. He does have one indeed. It's at the back of his base. He could be going for another sudden transport. Historically, that has not worked in this series. But we'll have to see. I really like this by Vindy's going to be cutting off that immediate attack route on the far right side. And of course, this expansion location is potentially a little bit safer, but not safe from Kyocopters, not safe from Vindicators, which we do have a first Vindicator out on the map. And we do have at least a couple of Javelin soldiers mixed in with this army. However, if Vindy's gets eyes of this sudden transport, which he does definitely right now, he knows what it exactly is. We do have Riptide versus Javelin Troopers, or Riptide and Javelin Troopers saved from those Imperial Warriors. And once again, the Vindicator's going to be doing a fantastic job cleaning up those tank busters. Vindy's. Again, like a repeat of game number one on Fire Island, Vindy's did a solid job of cleaning up that force. Once again, the Sudden Transport does go down. All five of those tank busters do get eliminated. And these Riptides with these Javelin Troopers, they're inside of the base of Kiro. Vindy's can go ahead and put on direct pressure. In fact, I would almost recommend that. Kiro has almost no forces. Vindy's could go ahead and bottleneck camp outside of these forces and just slam the forces as they come out. Although it looks like an additional Vindicator heading across the map. The Riptides heading back potentially for those repairs. Kiro did grab the oil derrick on the left side of the map. Not sure if I mentioned that or not. Imperial Warriors, four and five of them do get added on the tier two. That is what the Mecha Bay was doing. That's why there were no Tangus in that first engagement. It was a fast tier two. A Tangu for a follow-up. Tangu is going to be heading off to the left side. Might be able to get a little bit of harassment done, but really, that is what Kiro needs to do. He has a delayed... He has Basically, his entire army is delayed because everything he built out of that barracks got eliminated. So he had... He, his entire army got reset. Fortunately for him, Vindy's didn't actually go in and put on direct pressure. Getting, oh, losing that Striker VX is so painful. So painful. The Riptides, once again, they're up to full health. And the focus firing is not good enough. The Riptides are still aggroing the damage from those Imperial Warriors. That is absolutely great for Kiro. Not so, or great for Vindy's, not so great for Kiro. Tengu is going to be getting eliminated. Not close enough to really do any splash damage to that or refinery. Riptides are going to be able to potentially eliminate all five of those Infinity or Imperial Warriors. Infinity Warrior, now that would be absolutely terrifying. The Tengu not able to really do too much in terms of harassment. I mean, it did kind of force the Ore Collector off the line, but that Ore Collector is already back in business, back to work. His holiday is over. His smoke break is done. This is not the U.S. Department of Transportation. People actually do work in the Allied Army. That was probably a little bit more of a blanket statement than I wanted to make. A little bit more... A little bit meaner than I wanted to be. Three Vindicators out on the map. An Apollo also going to be mixed in, which means Tangus will be enough to deal with it, potentially. Depends on how many we actually have. Do we actually only have one Tangu out on the map? No, that's a Dojo Core of all things. Dojo Core is going to be heading around the right side of the map, and that generator is going to be going down. The power plant may actually be kicking. Oh, that's going to be dangerous. If that, if that just kicked... Uh, Kiro into low power mode, then his production times are going to be doubled. He's going to have a hard time dealing with this army. Traveling troopers are going to be desperately trying to micro away. Yes, a brilliant move there by Vindy's. He's going to be able to save that, save all of those javelin troopers, albeit just barely. Now they all do get crushed, but they do get a couple of more shots off. And Kiro is not actually going to be microing quite perfectly, which means a couple of these javelin troopers are going to be getting an additional kill on one of those tsunami tanks. The generator did go down. That is going to be potentially forcing the rebuild of that before the third if refinery does go down. Vindy's. He's got his own third refinery up. He's going for some bombing runs, which is a nice move 
However, it does look like Kiro is going to be grabbing that or that oil Derek on the right side of the map. The multi-gunner turret is back online. It did go down at a critical moment there, and Kiro was able to do a tremendous amount of damage with those crushes. He did take some damage himself. But I think that it's roughly equal out. It depends on this next engagement as well. The tsunami tanks need to start pressuring the front. They need to take out this refinery. They need to take out the barracks as well. And I'm actually receiving a phone call. We are going to be kicking in just a minute. All right, the tsunami tank is going to be pushing in that spy, actually getting crushed before he could purchase anything. Potentially, Vindy's didn't actually have enough cash to purchase and buy out those uh, tsunami tanks. A couple of more javelin troopers are going to be coming in. Those vindicators able to eliminate one of the tsunami tanks. It wasn't quite enough. There was action going on all over the map. But Vindy's, if he can maintain these four refineries and throw down a, uh, a war factory on the front line, he's going to be in absolutely fantastic condition. Of course, the danger zone comes with the crushing ability of pretty much everything that Kiro has. Everything that Kiro has is good in the sense, is good against infantry in the sense that it can crush it. So, I mean, directly, tsunami tanks and chopper VXs, not good in straight up battles versus infantry. But crushing, of course, gives them huge amounts of potential. Vindy's, how is he going to be able to defeat that? Static D mixing in those cryocopters. Actually, he does have one already here. Mixing in the cryocopters and the Vindicators. He has to be absolutely careful here. And of course, then how does how does Kiro defeat it? Well, he has to be absolutely careful because with that shrink ray from the cryocopters, I don't know if he's going to have enough to stop this. Yes, he does. He does indeed. But two of the tsunami tanks actually end up getting purchased. Possibly even three. That little one, yes, indeed, did get purchased. The spike finally does get crushed. And tsunami tanks now against tsunami tanks. Brother against brother. Civil war happening in the Japanese army. Absolutely terrifying for Kiro because he was the one who actually had to pay for those units. And now they've defective, they've joined the other side. But he does still have this third refinery up and operational. However, if he doesn't do something to clear the skies, he is going to be in so much trouble. I think I think that cryocopter actually shrunk the chopper VX after it got eliminated. The striker, rather. A additional striker is going to be moving in. But if this cryocopter crashes in the wrong location, although it may not crash at all, no, it will not crash at all. That tsunami tank will maybe survive. It might actually be getting taken out. We'll have to see if the Javelin Trooper does not get the opportunity to take it down. It is going to be taking additional damage from that rear armor because of moving so slowly. It does go down, and now these generators are once again going to be under fire, quite potentially. Could also be going for the ore refinery. We need a concentrated attack. Kiro's only hope is to rally his forces for one big go. On the right side of the map, we do have going to be coming in a nice cryocopter harassment. The Assault Destroyer is also going to be moving in. Kiro has been defeated. Vindy's with a spectacular, like, what, what, I don't even know how long that game was because I got stopped in the middle of it like a 10-minute game. Again, finishing this series out with some fantastic play from both of these players. A big congratulations to Vindy's. His first tournament win. Unfortunately, because there was only, I think, 13 participants, there was no cash prize. There was a cash prize via donations, but because there was only 13 instead of 16 players who participated... There was no cash that was actually handed out for the win. Number 22 is probably already happened by the time these videos go up. But some more Red Alert 3 action is going to be coming soon. Also, some more Kane's Wrath, Tiberium Wars, and hopefully some Zero Hour action as well. Coming in the near future, thank you very much for watching. Vindy's playing pretty commandingly. And I mean, once he secured that third refinery, Kiro's was severely delayed in terms of his third refinery. And then after that, the fourth refinery compounding that. And I mean, there wasn't a huge amount of harassment from either side, but Vindy's didn't necessarily need to. There were some really nice army resets where both players were like, ah, clash. And then they both essentially just reset their own armies because they were controlling well enough to eliminate their opponent's armies. In nine minutes, we do have the finish to the series in one game. Vindy's was able to finally squeak out that win. That will do it for this series. Thank you very much for watching again. This is going to be Cybert, signing out.